Welcome in. Wednesday, Amazing Blue Reviews. Good afternoon, Michigan football. And I am pleased to welcome in the senior editor here at the Amazing Blue Review, and that is Trevor McHugh. Trevor, great to see you. I can tell you, for me, since last Thursday, I don't want to exaggerate it, but I have, it feels like I've spent most of my days <laughs> looking at statements and weighing out the probabilities and, and trying to think through who has something to gain and what's real, what's a infraction, what's a bylaw, what actually could happen with, you know, Michigan with the allegations of, of sending somebody in person to scout games. Over again. That. Just, but, oh, that's, I don't, I'm, I'm ready for it. I like it. So, that's right. That's right, Ben. I think a lot of that, I would guess that you've been doing the same thing. Yeah. I mean, we've been obviously keeping tabs on the story and then also working and trying to <laughs> keep a tab on it. Okay. Also working to see what we can find out and get through all the BS and, and, and what truth is out there. It's, I mean, it's exhausting and it's tough for Michigan fans that, you know, want to be really excited about having arguably the best team in the country, the Heisman front runner and, and all these things going their way. And it's hard to not feel like they're being a little targeted and all this. Right. But I've seen a lot of Ohio state fans and other writers, in fact, and, and folks come out that have kind of said, Hey, this is what you guys wanted. Right. I think um, 11 warriors put out a really good article that I thought was fair shots at Michigan fans, but it was like, Hey, I'm happy for you guys. You finally became what you wanted Ohio state. Right. This, this is what happens when you get at the top. This is the kind of stuff you deal with. But um, yeah, the, the slow drip of information and yeah, who it's coming from and blah, blah, blah. I mean, people have to remember that was the goal, right? That's why they're doing this. Michigan's losing the optics war, I guess you could say. We'll get into some of that coverage and issues I've had with that as well. But yeah, it's it's just exhausting. I think is probably the right word for it. Well, it's just part. It's for as long as I've been watching college football, following it. It's part any kind of uh, uh, controversy or or drama involving college football. It, it happens every year. Michigan just happens to be front and center. But uh, honestly, people love it. They, they like if it's whatever. Let's just say it was Florida State and there was a scandal. You know, Michigan fans they would be like, forever. Let's have quick justice and throw them out. And then you know when the shoe's on the other foot, it's like. Let's wait until the end, until we, you know, uh, make any uh, judgments on this and every, while everybody else is coming after you. Yeah, but it is part, all of that kind of gets into it. It, it. The part about college and really all sports now that the entertainment part of of scandal is there, and, and, and Michigan is in that. Uh, we can sit here and just kind of, I don't know, we there we wouldn't have to beat around the bush. We could go right at the bush and everything else, but we could just sit here for an hour. So we did try to put a little structure uh, with this, and then we ask you if you're in there, and if you know you have a question or a point, uh, we will take your questions and points along with these um, uh, these guidelines. We will look at if Michigan can be punished this season, there's been some of that conversation over the last 24, 48 hours, uh, Jim Harbaugh, how this could affect Jim Harbaugh right now in the off season in future seasons with Michigan, we will look as Michigan is number two and eight. No on their bye week, just what it looks like for the rest of the season, Purdue, Penn state, Maryland, and Ohio state. And after, but we'll start with the latest news with the NCAA versus Michigan and Trevor that has to do with the NCAA Josh Henschke, the publisher of the maize and blue review has learned that the NCAA is coming to town. And <laughs> so they're coming to town this weekend. Why are they coming to town? And what are they trying to do here? What's going on with this? We, we still don't a hundred percent. know. the hope I would say is that they're going to bring whatever evidence it is. They have that, this reaches a level of rule breaking or involves Michigan at a level where like, Hey, there actually is an investigation, right? So far, everything has been, like I said, this slow drip through the media and that's where Michigan has been finding out, um, you know, Ward released his initial statement. Obviously we'll comply, blah, 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 generic athletic director statement. We know some devices were turned over. Okay, great. And then it's kind of been a pushback from Michigan now, like, okay, are you guys going to tell us anything? 
right? Like what, what's actually happening here? We keep seeing these things and, and back to, I guess this is where I'll bring up the reporting, right? When this first came out, they were using Connor's military experience as like a way to frame him as this genius, you know, military mind that had this vast network of spies and things like that. And the more stuff that comes out about him, it looks like, okay, this was just a guy that was a big fan around the program, earned this analyst role. We know he was involved in scouting. There's been nothing with that. And again, the sign stealing, we're seeing all these clips like, oh, there he is on the sideline. Yep. All that's allowed, right? It's how he came into it. And now we're learning a lot of that was, okay, he's transferring these tickets to people that could just be like college kids, <laughs> right? They're not, this isn't, they haven't yet proven. And I think this is what the NCAA probably really wants to prove is that Connor himself went to a game or which would clearly violate rules or somebody more connected to Michigan. Um, like I said, I, I keep wanting to know like who funded it, you know, was there any direction here, whatever, but yeah, the NCAA is coming in. We still don't know really what um, in terms of any action from them, like that, that's a ways down the road. Right. So we, I don't know if this is just an initial conversation, if this is going to be the evidence presentation we've been waiting for, if this is just going to be more conversation, we don't know yet, but the hope is some things will start to trickle out and maybe we'll have a better idea of what's happening for real instead of you know trying to pick apart articles that we've been seeing yeah and i would also think that the ncaa would be coming in and sitting across a, a table for michigan and saying okay you know this is what we have you, you've right. seen some of this uh, and the level of cooperation what does michigan want to say of course you know you know this is a, a little bit of a finesse you know like you know uh, with a lot of different things i've never been into any situation where a, a plea bargain, you know, is, is taking place, but you know, it, it's not like you show all your cards, you know, they're showing a little bit of the errors, Michigan saying, okay. And, you know, you know, maybe this could be a situation where, you know, and, and this is what I think Michigan fans are, are hoping for though. They're hoping for nothing, but you know, could, could Michigan get away, you know, with uh, you know, they, they cooperate if the NCAA is like, Hey, you know, if you guys tell us th this and, you know, and we get that, that, you know, maybe that, you know, Michigan could just, I don't know, get away with a, a fine and, you know, I don't know, a public reprimand or an apology. That would seem like, um, you know, pretty light considering what at least, you know, some of the talk has been this week. Like, let's immediately uh, make them ineligible for the Big Ten championship game. And, oh, yeah, no college football. Like that, that would seem, you know, it would be. We're going to get to that coming up. But. You know, that's the the heavy side and the light side, probably somewhere in between. But yeah, like coming in and, and having this discussion, you know, laying some of the cards out on the table and, you know, get this process rolling a little bit. Yeah, I mean, the most likely scenario is this is going to take literally years, right? Like <laughs> the NCAA is not known for moving quickly, right? Especially when we're talking about this rule or bylaw or whatever you want to call it that the NCAA almost took off the books a couple of years ago and has a lot of gray area and potential loopholes in it that, you know, you could see a legal battle go for a little while. So I would say what we, at that point, I like, you know, I, I don't know exactly where I, I've seen that a number of times where I, I've heard, I say I read it or heard it. I'm not exactly sure, but when you said like the NCAA determined that there was not that much of an, uh, of an advantage gained by in-person scouting, you know, I don't know if they, they wrote that or if that's just common knowledge, but if true, and this is what Michigan has done, that's something that they've already deemed, Hey, it's not that big of a deal. That does seem like it, it plays in Michigan's favor. Yeah. And I, so what that was, the statement that was going around was essentially the argument for removing it, right? Like this was why we're going to look at it. And that highlighted piece of doesn't really provide an advantage, right? I actually thought the sentence before it was even more impactful, which is the idea that when this law was written in 1994, not law, excuse me, rule by law, um, it was because one for budget concerns, right? The big programs could go do this in-person scouting and other programs couldn't. So it was a money thing. Two, you had these big camcorders, right? It was about limiting crews of people videotaping, right? And in the latest leak thing about Connor, it talks about how he was scouting through TV. There is nothing, and I would argue even worse, like I can watch any game I want at any time I want with my streaming apps and zoom in and cut and, and do all these different things, right? That kind of technology didn't used to exist. And that was an argument that was made 
when the NCAA looked at that rule as well. It's like, is this even really with modern technology? Does this rule even make sense anymore? Is there any reason for it? Right. So again, the optics of it, what Michigan was or wasn't doing or what Connor was or wasn't doing isn't great, but that's why every player and coach is coming out. Like you think, <laughs> you think everyone isn't doing this right. And there's some coaches that aren't commenting for a very specific reason. The right? audacity like, of Michigan. Yeah. Well, what could help Michigan is if, the, uh, if over the next few days, we get a Connor Stallions from Ohio state, Alabama, some more blue bloods, bloods. And it's like, yeah, this is going on everywhere. I, I think that, you know, that's, part of with the NCAA coming in again, if they didn't, if they didn't determine that this was that big of a deal and there are lots of teams doing it and they've just got Michigan and they want to use them as an example, but Michigan cooperates. I think that's, you know, where if you're a Michigan fan, you say, all right, you know, like, uh, and then this is, you know, I know this is a little bit of uh, I don't know if it's a stretch or not saying cooler heads are going to prevail here. Let's come together, find something and then come out of the other side with Michigan, not getting, in that much trouble. I, that sounds like a little bit of wishful thinking, you know, yeah. I, but uh, you know, it's, it is Michigan going to want to, there's a lot of people that I've seen like, there's like stonewall these guys. They'll be out of the picture in two years. Anyways, talking about the NCAA and don't cooperate at all. Well, you know, I, I would say myself answering that question is just the whole thing when they just had the level twos and Harbaugh, I, I believe did stonewall them and tell them where they could stick it. And then they raise that up to a level one. So I, I don't, I would suggest not going that route. It may put them and maybe affecting this situation right now. So I, I would not say do that, but what do you think? Well, the, the, my, my first thought about all this, I, I thought about comparisons, right? I think, and, and we'll get into this more with the conversation about the big 10 and the CFP. I think the people that can hurt Michigan the most right now are probably Michigan, right? How they respond to the NCAA if they want to take any action or get ahead of this or whatever. And I thought about the Fab Five and how Michigan handled that after the fact and, and trying to appease and taking down the banners and doing this and, and you know, basically bringing their program back down to earth. And then I think about Kansas and Kansas and the serious allegations they were under for four years. And Bill Self gets a three game suspension, which is obviously significantly smaller than Harbaugh's because he, coaches in more games and gets a massive new contract extension and wins a national championship. And then four years later, it just kind of comes out that, Oh, yeah, here's these little violations. Right. So I think it is to Michigan's advantage to let this legally play out and let this take time. I think there's a balance between cooperation and pushback. I think that's where we're at right now. There was cooperation and I do believe ward. We have reason to believe that ward is pushing back on the NCAA now saying, okay, like this, this is getting out of hand, right? Again, another situation where anonymous Big Ten coaches can say this is the worst scandal since the Patriots, and Michigan can't comment, right? And these these slow leaks, and we're not seeing anything. So, I don't think you have to be aggressive with your pushback, but I think you have every absolute right to defend yourself and legally go after the NCAA, especially with how kind of flimsy this this rule and bylaw is. But on the other side of it, like when you're talking about like Michigan getting away with, you know, nothing and people being upset, this is egregious, right? Like we're, we're, we're learning that so far, I think every school, but one big 10 school has said that this occurred, that he bought tickets for games, you know, Clemson and, and all these other potential opponents that Michigan was going to play. Um, a lot of these other schools are upset, right? And, and that's part of it. And that, and the big 10 is probably upset to have their back to back champions embroiled in something like this. So they're going to get some meat. I just don't know what it's going to be, right? Like Connor, I, I don't even want to theorize on this because this is a real person, right? But like him being let go, right? There's a, there's a comparison with Baylor and a coach getting like a half game suspension for being on the sideline for one game. So I, I don't know what that translates to Connor's time here. I would imagine him either leaving the program completely or being put somewhere else is probable. I think a fine, is very likely maybe more suspensions, you know, for Harbaugh or any coach if they can tie it to them. But again, that's a massive piece of this still. Um, the people talking about vacating wins and things like that, though, we're, we're so far from even getting to that territory or even hearing anything that would justify that kind of talk. Yeah, we're going to get to that in a moment. You know, like, that's where I get to this finesse part where the NCAA is coming in. Like, you know, Michigan is not compelled actually to tell them exactly you know like a lot of people like if you ask the assistants they say no we didn't 
We didn't really know what this guy was up to. He was a, oh, I've heard this a lot, a lone wolf. They can say that. This is where the difference to me for the, you know, the Kansas and, you know, going back to the Fab Five. The Fab Five had Ed Martin, who was under an FBI probe. Right. And so they, the, the government came in and said, look, you have to go on the stand and you have to take it on. You can perjure yourself and you can be thrown in jail. With Kansas, they could say, hey, were you giving money? And if they had some wiretaps, they'd say, no, that wasn't us. And like, they can't do anything. They don't have any the recourse. You know, you're not under, you know, the suspicion where you're going to, you know, could be arrested then. And that was the situation with, uh, with, with Michigan, with the FBI getting involved. So they were compelled uh, in this situation. Michigan, when they come in there, you know, they know this and what they say, you know, how much they want to cooperate. You know, like, so, I, you know, having the, the answer of like, what do you guys really, you know, want to do here? With this, so do we want to play this out over a you know a couple of years? Or are we, you know, going to try to you know make something of this of this rule now from '94? Things have changed an awful lot, and you know, yeah, we were the one that were nabbed here. I don't think Michigan's going to be held up. It's like, oh, hey, they're but you know, can they come to some right. something reasonable here? You know, that would be my part. If we move on to the next situation here. Uh, Trevor and it's Vince, and it's about what if anything could be done to Michigan this year in terms of punishment. And Vince says he he has heard the biggest concern of the Big Ten or college football committee using this all as a reason to keep us out of the playoffs in the Big Ten championship game. This is possible. So I'll ask you, I, I would, you know, there was ESPN, I think it was uh, Rittenberg came out and said, yeah, the, the Big Ten commissioner has the power to get in there. And, you know, to ban Michigan. And there are a lot of, of uh, you know, people in the media that are like, do it. You know, uh, Mandela from The Athletic and, you know, Michigan fans are all over these guys. And, you know, they uh, are, you know, hating them. That's their right. I mean, that's part of the, of the the game here. What I would say for those people, though, for forever, when it has come down to a, a scandal, the and, and this just takes Michigan, if you just put them over here for a second, the, the, the biggest complaint of anybody that is uh, uh, followed scandals is that it, it's always after the fact, a year or two or three down the line, you're, you're hitting a team and the players are already in the pros or they've already graduated. The coach is already gone. And everybody said, well, what the hell does that do? This is a situation. This is why I know this is why they're talking about it. It's like, look, you've got Michigan. They think dead to rights. We don't know that. Uh, we don't know if they got whatever they have. We don't actually know if it could really stick or if that's going to be their interpretation. But that's why a lot of these national and sure, there's going to be some people that have an ax to grind. I want to see Michigan go down. That's all true. But I think there's a part of, of that where if this was another school that wasn't Michigan and they had them in their crosshairs and you thought like, why wait? Let's, you know, you can actually do something, but I don't th having said all that, I, I don't, th I, I would put it under 1%, maybe even under, you know, that put it in the 0.001% chance uh, of happening. Uh, you know, how do you see that? Yeah. I think, you know, the phrase you used there was dead to rights, which to me means like obvious guilt, right? Like, um, in that situation, you're talking about like where a player was used throughout the season, the team knew he was ineligible, but they continued to play him anyway. Right. Something where it's like an obvious, okay, you had this ineligible player, your wins don't count, whatever the, the difference between the, the big 10 and why people are a little bit worried about him is because it's their conference, right? They, they can change the rules at the last minute. They award the champion. They can decide they're not going to, for reasons they want to, they can take away the previous championships, right? Um, there is some reporting from people that have been very after Michigan in this, that even they are saying they think the Big Ten will wait till the NCAA is done. I do think people at the Big Ten are probably really upset and frustrated by this even being a story, and obviously they're dealing with other athletic departments calling them. Um, with what I've seen now, there's nothing that makes me think the Big Ten would move on this. Again, until I see... The, the funding piece of it, right? Who was paying for these tickets? What was the directive? Whether it's Michigan admitting to it or it's like 100% solid evidence, it would take something pretty unbelievable for the Big Ten to step in this year, in my opinion, because I think that's a really dangerous system they could get into, you know, if they're affecting a team this year 
and then it turns out they were wrong, right? Or it wasn't up to the level that maybe it's been spoken about. And I feel the same way about the college football playoff too, because there's a lot of money involved in that. And if they're explicitly saying that they're going to leave Michigan out because of this, that's a big legal door to open. And I don't know if that's something they want to engage in, I guess. So if, until the NCAA is actually issuing infractions or something that, you know, the Big Ten or CFP can grab onto, I just don't see any situation where either group would affect this season. And again, if, if allegations are delivered, Michigan's got 90 days to respond. That puts us out past the season anyway. And then even then, I think it's going to be a back and forth battle, like we said, that could take time. I am arguably more worried about the Big Ten than I am the NCAA, just because I don't think there's a lot of teeth in the rule specifically that we're talking about. I think Michigan would get some sort of punishment. The rule would get changed, et cetera. And I could see the Big Ten go back and maybe take away the championships, depending on if we learn more, et cetera. But in terms of impacting this year, the biggest way that people can impact this year for Michigan that want to is by doing what they're doing, which is this slow drip leak and already setting the narrative, winning the optics battle, having everybody labeling them cheaters, right? That's the easiest way for them to impact the year. In my opinion, if they had something solid enough where they could like literally keep Michigan out of the big 10 championship or the playoff, we wouldn't be seeing all these leaks, right? They, they would have held on to that and come forward with whatever big piece they have. I could be wrong. We'll see. But each day this seems to be losing more and more steam. Like today they, they posted that he was like texting with a guy and it's like, yeah, he was bragging about he knew Harbaugh and Partridge. Yeah, he was on the staff. Of course he knew them. Like what? <laughs> right. So. Yeah, I think people, they, they really want that tie. Uh, like when you hear a lot of the the lone wolf, and they're like, no, oh, none of the coaches had anything to do with it. A lot of people are like, well, you know, it seems like he, you know, actually had a lot. They're trying to, you know, draw or, or, or make that bridge. Look, yeah, it would be unprecedented doing anything. This year, I, I couldn't imagine heading into like, so this is the Big Ten, you know, big noon on Fox, Penn State coming up uh, November 11th, you know, undefeated Michigan at that point, you know, nine and oh, going into half. Well, Michigan can't play for the Big Ten. Whoa, I can't. Or hey, biggest Michigan and Ohio State game, number one versus number two, very, at the very least, number two versus number three. Uh, I think we, you know, there's a big chance it could be that. Oh, but Michigan can't play in the champ. Like they're not going to do that. That would be stupid for right. them to do, and unprecedented. So while there is some of that talk, and I I get it because they, that's what you know uh, for thirty years people have uh, you know uh, have lamented about uh, some scandals after the fact. You just you, you do need a chance to defend yourself, get the allegations, respond. And be able to come back and uh, and all of that. And plus, what we say, like however heavy you think this, you know, even though like Michigan fans are just going through it, you know, like we have since last Thursday, you know, it's not that heavy. I mean, like it's it's not like you know, the, it's not the the scandal of the century or something uh, that is going on here. You know, Colin Cowherd said something this week, and mostly. You know, it was theatrical, you know, about his statement. And he was, you know, talking about being up there in the third deck. He did a great job on it, but there really wasn't a lot. You know, he was acting there. He just had his opinion. But the one part that he said is like, you know, it's Michigan. And and if it was Purdue, it wouldn't be getting this kind. But, you know, that's not a great it's, – it doesn't help you really with your defense. But, you know, 9 out of 10 times or 99 out of 100 times, it's great to be Michigan – in a spot where you've got the spotlight on you and it, and it's some things that are, are, are not good. It, this is a, a situation where it's not good, you know, to be Michigan where everybody's coming after you and, oh, it's scandal and uh, everybody's podcast is coming out, you know, and, and, and everything else. So from that, uh, from that part, go ahead. I'm going to put some questions up there before we get to the next piece with Jim Harbaugh. What, what else? Yeah, no, just like echoing what you said. I mean, outside of the world of Twittersphere and message boards, right? This isn't a massive story. And when you start getting up to, again, like I said, either current college coaches like Dion, who's a former player who was willing to say something, Brady Quinn, um, Brock Heward was another one. I, I, I have to make a long list of these guys, but anyone who's played, right, has come out and been like, this isn't a story, <laughs> right? Like, let there, a, a few of them have been like, if you want to hear a story, I can't tell you, but let me tell you, right? Like, so this isn't hitting home with the people who have played or been around the game for a long time. Obviously, some current coaches are upset because Michigan's winning, right? And that was like kind of the argument I saw from some Ohio State people that I thought was fair that was like, hey, 
when you're on the top, this is what happens to you, right? This is the stuff you get hit with. Like it's just part of being the villain. And yeah, Michigan drives clicks. Jim Harbaugh is polarizing. He drives clicks and there's narrative and agendas at play here. I don't think it's a coincidence that ESPN, which is lockstep with the sec in a media deal is the one that seems to be the harshest after Michigan and releasing some of these anonymous comments and being super speculative, excuse me. And then Fox sports who is obviously linked with the big 10 through media deals and whatever are not doing that. Not necessarily defending Michigan, but maybe trying to put some water on the fire, right? That's not a coincidence that these two large networks are agenda driving for the conferences they're most tied to. Well, well said there. Let's get to some of the the feedback here before we talk about Jim Harbaugh. Tyler saying we pay you for film from a couple third parties. So how is this any different? You know, I I think it's going to come down and I don't know, Trevor, like there's, uh, this is at first I was saying this, like if uh, Stallions was always at the Michigan games. And so how could he be in person at these other ones? Like, who cares? It sounds like Michigan's working around the rule by having other people do that. If this is what they were doing, filming the sidelines with all those tickets, big deal. Good job, Michigan. I, you know, I, but, and that might be how Michigan, when they went out there and, and looked at this said, Hey, you know, let's, we know Michigan has gone through the rule book with a fine tooth comb and said, Hey, what can we do here to get an advantage? And could this have been one of those situations? Like, look, if we pay for somebody else to go out to these games and film this stuff, you know, that's not look at the, they have their lawyers in there and they look at that, but could the NCAA interpret it as you being a scout, an advanced scout, if certainly if you're paying them and then you're using that footage, uh, can they extrapolate that into you being like on the staff by proxy? Now that seems like a little bit of a stretch to me. And I would think if you're a Michigan, you'd say, come on here. That's, that's a stretch, but the NCAA, like they are the judge and they are the jury. And they could say, look, you know, who's fooling who you're paying people to go to the game and film on the sidelines. That's advanced scouting. So we don't want to hear, you know, they can say that. So it could, I think if you're asking me the crux, of this whole thing is that Michigan felt like, you know, that they're going through the rule book and trying to take advantage of anything they can without going over the line. And the NCAA is saying, no, we interpret this as you going over the line. Oh, that's where we're at. I think. Right. And again, this is the legal part where I think lawyers will know better, but it comes back to like the law was written when we didn't all have one of these, right. Or not the, I keep saying law. I need to stop saying law. The rule as it is written was when people didn't have phones that they could go in and record with, right? You'd literally be there with a massive camera and and doing scouting, if you will. But there's 80,000, 100,000 people in there. So there's so much gray area in that. Um, I I don't know what angle would be taken. Again, for me, it's, it's the funding and who knew and who directed it. Right now, the more stuff comes out, the more it looks like Connor was just an overzealous you know, volunteer super fan at one point that gets brought on staff and he's helping with scouting and he's doing a good job. Um, and you know, whatever he was doing behind the scenes with these tickets and and sending to fans and just random people and then going around and bragging about it. Right. Like that's, that's the piece that like, if Harbaugh was involved in this, he's not going around and bragging about it. Right. This, and this 600 page, what he called manifesto, right. It's just looking more like, kind of a lone wolf guy that went too far. And again, the optics of it look terrible. I get it. Somebody going in the stadium, but you're, I mean, we're literally seeing videos. This is so funny to me. People keep posting these videos of Michigan sideline giving signs to their defense as an evidence that Michigan was stealing signs. And the irony that you have video of their sideline from 50 feet away is just lost on them. Right. Like, (laughs) Us being there, I posted me like, I can go on the sidelines and, and video. T- I can do those things, right? So I don't know. I, I, for me, I, that's where I'm at. I think it looks bad and Connor's got to go and it was it is what it is. And I think there's a lot of gray area and the NCAA will maybe find and adjust their rule. But if Michigan's funding this or, you know, one of the higher up coaches is directing it, that's where I get more like, oh, okay. But until then... I just don't care. It's just that there's so many programs doing this. I, I tweeted it when Connor got his computer taken. I'm like, there's a lot of guys deleting 
files on their computers today. Trust me. Yeah, we don't have that part about we. You know, he purchased the tickets, but uh, you don't know like if it was coming out of his own pocket. I don't know how they can. And I mean, make that it. seems improbable, right? That he could afford all of these tickets. Well, but. you know, that could be like, okay, yeah, right. What's, what's more feasible. Somebody else uh, that has a Michigan connection, giving him the money. Now, is it coming up from Jim Harbaugh? Is it coming from the, you know, like those are two right. different things too. And you know, what can you prove at that point? You know, he can, you know, possibly do that, you know? So I don't know, like, you know, then, they have to weigh all of those sort of things. And then just real quick, back to what you said, even if he went to the game, like, so we have precedent on this. Jeff Levy is an offensive coordinator. I don't remember the teams and who was associated with what was on an opposing sideline for a game. And he got a one game suspension. So even if you went to one, I don't know that we're even still at this point where it's like, Oh my, you know, again, the vacating wins and this massive takedown the program thing. The only door that's open now is the way the NCAA now perceives where the head coach is responsible for everything that happens in their program, whether they know or didn't know. Right. So if, if they want to link it to Harbaugh that way, what can they link to him or say, Hey, this was your program, whatever. I think that's where some people are like, uh, you just don't want the NCAA sniffing around your program. Right. I mean, that that's just what it is. That I think we can all agree on. Brian is going back when I mentioned the fab five and, and Ed Martin under the FBI probe. And he was saying that there was an FBI wiretap involved in the Kansas case. You know, you're, you're right about that, Brian. That's what was so surprising to us that we're sitting back and, and watching this. They're like, they had people uh, on a, and I think about the LSU because that's the one that's the one that I could quote, and, and nothing really happened there either. We're like, hey, we made a pretty, we made a pretty damn good uh, offer or whatever it was, and they still weren't able to get that across the line. And you know that that shows you how difficult uh, it can be. Now I don't know with those wiretaps being involved if they were. Uh, trying to get people and put them on the stand under uh, uh, and under oath, like so they weren't compelled uh, to testify there. I, I don't know the actual distinction there, but with Michigan, uh, they were. So that was it. Let's take a few more on the feedback. Then we talk about Harbaugh. Let's see. We'll, we go to Mark, who says, since the NCAA records are somehow unknown, wasn't much done pre-employment of this alleged guy. I like it. Trevor referenced a, this manifesto uh, <laughs> that we saw that story today. Anytime you put anything next to a manifesto, it's going to make you seem like, you know, you're, uh, I don't know. Yeah. If anybody wants to show you their manifesto, run, whatever yeah. it is, whatever topic you're talking about. <laughs> no, I, I don't like manifesto. So anyway, <laughs> they did kind of this before, this, uh, you know, he was at Navy, but he was at Navy. He was go. He was a, a big time Michigan fan. Is said in that story that his, his parents were were Michigan grads, and that I don't know how they determined that. You know, uh, he went to Navy because guys like uh, Bo and Bill Belichick, you know, talk so highly of the service academies. I mean, like, so all of this. I mean, the the background on Stallions is in that uh, particular story and you know you can say well nothing makes makes you think more lone wolf than a guy with a manifesto i can understand why people would say that you know but I, you know i don't know yeah. if that's what that means uh tyler says i guess the big 10 could keep you out but are they really going to give up the money yeah they could keep you out in in the name of like you know fairness and and everything there but yeah do, do they want a team when are they going to do that before they play Penn state and Ohio state after they win, are they going to do that and keep them out? Like are they coming down yeah. right now without like, you know, here in Michigan side or, you know, what are they going to do there? And like I said, that's a massive risk because if Michigan has, Michigan's going to sue you, right. If you try and do that, if there isn't something, uh, I, the best example, it's not the best example, but I, that I can think of right now, I guess uh, in the 2020 COVID season, the Big Ten had come up with their rules for who was going to represent each division in the Big Ten championship game. And they had to consider potential games that were canceled because of COVID. And if you only played this many games or whatever, and they wrote the rules the way they did, and then they ended up changing it because when Michigan and Ohio State's game was canceled, Ohio State hadn't played enough games per the rules they set. So Indiana was going to go. And the argument they made, which I think is fair, was Ohio State beat Indiana head-to-head. -head. 
had Ohio State and Michigan played that week and Michigan won, Ohio State still would have been the Big Ten East representative. So it seemed weird to punish them when they would have been the representative no matter the outcome of the game, right? But they changed that rule the week before. Indiana could have pushed back and maybe had a case and whatever, but again, our, you know, the Big Ten presents their case that way. So unless they have something like that where it's like, no matter what you think, this is why you shouldn't be able to go, I just don't see them taking that risk, especially with, look, you just got $1.6 billion right in a TV deal. And Michigan's a massive piece of that. I just, I don't think they're going to preemptively strike one of their biggest earners unless they have something rock solid. I don't think so either. Ma'am. M a M. (laughs) Nice. Feels like this has more to do with Jim Harbaugh's comments about the revenue sharing and the fact that the NCAA was on the Hill the same week, defending its Supreme oversight of the college football compensation. So yeah, Harbaugh before the season said, yeah, he wants the players to get a slice of this pie. The NCAA like, wait a second. So could they be upset about that? Uh, In addition to being raising that level two to a level one and really Harbaugh, you can make a case that he's been, uh, uh, you know, going at him, going at the NCAA since, you know, the first day he took the job. Now look, you know, I, uh, I, I thought, you know, putting the satellite camps out there, I thought that was creative and, you know, didn't go against any of the rule and some of the, you know, some of the other things, you know, as well. So, but, you know, that's, you know, that's some um, high level conspiracy type yeah. stuff at the NCAA. I, I don't think that myself, but look, I, you know, I don't, I don't rule out anything like, you know, and, and OT's, I don't know if he's responding to people on the board or if he's talking to us, like saying, what are you guys even talking about? We're talking about it because nationally there's more than one person. There's a guy from the athletic. There's a guy from ESPN uh, who have both mentioned about doing something in season. I gave you the reason that I think that they're doing that. It's not because they're uh, a mouthpiece, but you know, that uh, it is a little political. You know, if you're watching Fox or CNN, there could be some of that. Um, you know, as, as Trevor indicated, let's let's not uh, be naive of that uh, of that part either. Yeah, let's put the tinfoil hat on real quick, right? Um, I think the NCAA's feelings towards Michigan and whatever Connor was doing are separate things and arguably related. Do I think they're doing this just because of Harbaugh? No, but I also think there's no denying. Like you said, he's been a thorn since he's come in, whether it was the satellite camps or pushing, right? He was a vocal advocate for the transfer portal and the player freedom there. He's been a vocal advocate for revenue sharing, right? Pointing out these massive TV deals. Why aren't we giving any of that money to the players, right? Um, I, I saw a comment like, feel free to pay kids under the table, but just don't you dare ask for us to share our revenue with them, right? <clears throat> but anyway, I no, I don't think this is that level you know of conspiracy or target but does the ncaa not like harbaugh and feel like maybe they want to drive a little harder on him yeah i I believe some of that's true all right we're going to get to the harbaugh part there's the two questions i I think i said i was going to move on after a couple these are the last two uh marvin is he thinks that sending a guy for the sole purpose of decoding signs is cringe there's a guy on every single sideline doing that there's players doing that, right? There's a reason there's eight dudes in color shirts and holding up different signs with celebrities on them and doing all that. Every single team is trying to steal signs, especially on the sideline during the game. What makes this different was, are they recording with staff member scouting and going to another level? But somebody, this I think of people decoding. No, it's not. Everybody's doing that. I promise you. Somebody, I don't remember the previous comment about the communication in the helmet. You know why we don't have the NFL technology of communication of the helmet? Because coaches don't want it because they want to steal signs, right? And the NFL, they literally have Microsoft Surface tablets where they can watch plays and see sideline and everything immediately, right? So technology is at a different point than what we're talking about. Again, I'm not trying to say Michigan didn't do anything wrong. Connor didn't do anything wrong. But like this kind of stuff where we're posting videos of him on the sideline trying to look at signs, everyone does that. Yeah, I'm not trying to say that Michigan did anything either, but the part where you're saying that that it's cringe, like Michigan 
we do know that they are against wading into and promising recruits money and then previous to NIL actually paying them. They're, they're not for that. That's a hill that, uh, you know, some people don't like that they're dying on, but it appears that that is one that they are on, a hill that they are defending, that they don't want to do that. So for me, going through the rule book and, and looking for, what do you call them, loopholes or, you know, things that they can take advantage of, if you want to play for national championships and Big Ten championships and you want to fight fire with fire and you know teams are out there and they're doing underhanded things, you have to get into some of those gray areas. So, like I said, I don't even know if this is crossing the line and actually doing it. Maybe it is. I, if I'm a Michigan fan, you say, look, you know, I understand that they have to go out there and, and you know, try things and push the envelope a little bit. And, and – my opinion again is that I think that they looked at the rule book and thought it was something that they could do, not get away with, but that they could, Hey, we, we, this person's not on our staff. So uh, that's, that's what this rule says. And the NCAA is, is saying, no, that's not so fast. So yeah, very Belichickian, right? That's where I think. <laughs> we're at here. Okay. Here's the last one. And it's from CA who says, He didn't know you couldn't buy tickets and not attend a game. If a Michigan staffer went, it would be illegal. But who says he bought the tickets for a staff member and not a family or vet? Well, that goes back to what we're saying. We don't know yet. If the NCAA, their interpretation is, CA, they, that you go to a game and uh, get tickets from a Michigan staff member and videotape the stands and then give it to them. The NCAA's interpretation might be that you are an advanced scout for Michigan. Welcome to the Michigan staff. Now I'm not saying, but they could have that interpretation. And I, it seems like that that is going to be their argument. And yeah. Michigan's argument is going to be, no, he's not a scout. And the NCAA is saying, yes, he is. So I don't know how they end up going through that. Michigan can say, we've got the rule book. And they could say, we have our interpretation of that rule. And so uh, uh, that's why it's fascinating to see how that ends up playing out. All right, Trevor, we've got two more things. One is going to be about how the rest of the season plays out for Michigan. But before that, Harbaugh, it so happens that we are in the bye week. There were a lot of us who thought that this week that there might have been a contract extension signed by Jim Harbaugh because it seemed like the log jam had opened up with the Regents with the president, with the athletic director, with Harbaugh himself, that he was ready for a contract. And now this happened. The reason that it wasn't signed prior to this, there was a a theory that it was because of this last investigation. So I don't know about how this one affects it and everything else. So I don't know. We can spend an hour just talking about this situation, but where Harbaugh sits and his future with Michigan. Go ahead. Tackle that one. Yeah, real quick, right? (laughs) Um, yeah, I mean, some people think that that explains the timing of all this, right? Even to the point that there's some theory that somebody connected to Michigan in a way who's maybe not the biggest Harbaugh fan might have been involved with some of this stuff getting leaked out to stall the contract, right? There there appears to be, I say appears to be, Michigan cares about their image and the optics as much as anything, right? So extending Harbaugh and making him the highest paid coach in the big 10 with this in the same news cycle might not be something that they want to do. So yeah, it feels like we've hit the pause button again. Right. Um, And we know Jim has said that he wants to feel wanted and it's good to feel appreciated. Right. And arguably defended might be another word. Right. So we, we, we're at a point where again, (laughs) we have to see this process play out. Um, I, I don't know, right? I, I've been somebody for a long time that doesn't think Harbaugh is going back to the NFL because of reasons I don't think the NFL would take him back that we've seen for multiple coaching cycles. I don't want to get into that a bunch. And for reasons that I think from a personal standpoint and from a family standpoint, I think he's in the best place he's been in, where his parents are here, his son's on the team, his kids, his grandkids. Like he's he's in a really good situation, right? And the idea of picking up everything he's established here post 2020 and moving to just some other city to potentially chase the Super Bowl. I, I don't see it, but how, how many times can you keep poking the bear with this stuff? Right. And it will he get exhausted or, or tired of it. Um, I don't know. I'm not in his head. Nobody is. 
I, I think he loves it here. I think he'd love to finish here. I think he'd love to have the contract and that support from Michigan. We know Santa Ono has stepped up in the previous office season and made that clear that this is how Michigan feels. Um, and this is just a, another wall, if you will, that we've hit. So I think it's far more likely that this dies down than it is that it ramps back up. Again, I don't know if there's some evidence that's going to change that. But because I don't think the Big Ten's doing anything right away, I don't think the CFP is holding them out. And I think the NCAA process is just getting started. I do think there's a chance this fizzles out and the deal hopefully gets done. Um, I know Harbaugh doesn't like the distraction and didn't necessarily want to do this in season, which is why people thought the bye week might have been a perfect time. But I, long story short, I don't know. I'm somebody more in the camp that I do think Harbaugh is more likely than not to con continue be here. But if, if Michigan or people at Michigan have decided or have pushed this narrative that maybe they can do as well without him and without the headaches, if you will, or aren't going to show him the love that he wants. And there's just this exhausting, everybody's tired of it. Maybe it ends. I don't know. Um, but I think trying to decide right now in the heat of all these leaks and everything is really reckless, really reckless. So, yeah, I think you've, you've covered all those, those major points. And, and I think if, if we have to guess, you know, like I'm going to be with you here, I think because of the, the family situation and Oh, by the way, like, you know, he can pretty much get a blank check here or maybe get a lifetime contract. You know, all of that seems, uh, you know, great for him. Uh, the only other side could be, you know, the NCAA, you know, maybe push it about, you know, that side, you know, the part about the NFL, all of that being said, you know, he, he could be the highest paid coach in, in college football history, certainly in the big 10, his assistants could have the highest uh, coaching salary pool, all of those things. But he might on that final line where it comes to a buyout, he, he could just be like, I still want to keep that kind of low just for some options, just in case. And Michigan might be like, okay, that's the part, you know, that we, uh, maybe, I know that's a guess. I don't know that. Uh, it could be. And so what you see about the NFL could be true. Uh, and it could be true for the way Harbaugh looks at it, but it also could be one like, Hey, you know, that's a nice little escape, little, uh, a little escape hatch. I get all the money and oh yeah, look at the yeah. fine print there, which everybody's going to go to immediately after they get the money. Like, oh, wait a second. He can still get out of this. So I don't know. I don't know either, but it this, I feel like if we didn't have this latest chapter, that Sunday, it would have been announced. That's uh, I felt like just during the season, the week, the week, he didn't want to, it's game week. You know, he's focusing on the game. Then he had a bye week. He had a couple hours where he could sit back and, uh, mow the grass and you know drink some lemonade and, and you know maybe sign a record-breaking deal but now with with this you know yeah you, you can't you can't quite do that there had been some thought or you know some reporting even from josh as well that the buyout number had finally reached a point where michigan would be happy um, but if you're asking me if jim harbaugh could sign a contract that would make nfl rumors go away there isn't one. He could have a hundred million dollar buyout and somebody's going to tell you that Jerry Jones is willing to pay it. Right. So I don't know if he could sign the contract to end the rumors per se. Um, but him being rewarded for the success that's happened. And again, he's not a money guy. Again, it's more just the, like, you deserve this kind of thing. Um, but something to be like a final nail of like Michigan and Harbaugh were linked. We're going to finish this together would have been a really good thing to see this week. No doubt about that. All right, so now that gets us to the final part of this, and that is like, oh yeah, the the season. The, yeah, there's the, a team. Yeah, the rest of the season, and you know, Michigan is a bye week. They got a night game against uh, Purdue. That is next, a week from this Saturday, and you know that is to go eight and zero. Oh, and you know, when people say, "What do you think of the rest of the season, Trevor?" What do you tell them? Yeah, I mean, if if we put the nonsense aside, Michigan has the best team in the country. I believe that hundred percent. And I've been told that by people that know more about football than me, right? Um, offensively, the whether you want the boa constrictor analogy or Jake Butts 85 mile per hour semi running into a Honda Civic, or Ouch. or uh, I think our own Josh Henschke went with a sandstorm analogy as well. However, you want to phrase it, this team wears you down in a way that's even more extreme than what they had done in previous years, right? We talked about you know, they kind of feel you out and maybe the game's close, but by the third or fourth quarter, they've worn you down and they take over. 
we're not even playing starters halfway through the third quarter anymore because they're wearing teams down much sooner than that. This offense is so efficient and so dangerous, and they've gotten so good at doing just enough, right? Like Blake Corum's not having a Heisman-level campaign this year, but he's doing Corum things. He's keeping the offense on schedule. He leads the nation in rushing touchdowns, right? J.J. McCarthy is methodical. I mean, the, the throw he made, the second Loveland touchdown, I'm sure you've talked about it, the one that went by Cal Halliday's ear, might be one of the best throws I've ever seen ever. Right, the confidence to deliver that, the receivers, the tight ends, everybody confident. The defense is the best in the country. Not a single snap inside their ten line, yard, excuse me, their ten yard line this year. Not one. It's unbelievable. They've scored more points than they've given up. Right. You can talk about the schedule all you want. They are annihilating teams. They're not. We saw Washington struggle with Arizona State. We saw UNC lose to Virginia. It is hard to win football games every single week it's a grind and their margin of victory is growing every single week i would argue this team we talked about coming into the year did they believe in themselves too much right we've seen teams try to create this underdog mentality we all laughed when georgia won the national championship and i don't remember which player it was but he's like oh everyone thought we were going five and seven this year no one thought you were going five and seven props to kirby smart for getting that narrative in your head the players are not distracted by this. If anything, this is the fuel that they maybe needed, right? And I thought Penn State was built like the 2021 Michigan team on paper. I still think they are. They're not executing like that team, right? That Penn State, Ohio State game, if you watch that, are you coming out more fearful of either one of those teams? You're not. So Michigan's getting better. They're healthier. They're fresh because of the way they're rotating guys. These other programs are starting to get hit with injuries. Penn State lost to Chop Robinson, which is a bummer. I think college football is the best when the best players are playing. I want Penn State at their best when Michigan plays them. That's good for everyone, right? Kyle McCord is Kyle McCord. I'm, I'm not picking on the dude. He's not C.J. Stroud. And if Michigan's 2-0 and against C.J. Stroud, who was the second pick and arguably looks like one of the best rookie NFL quarterbacks ever, what ground have you made up, right? So it's hard to not be really confident that Michigan's going to go undefeated in the regular season, win the Big Ten championship again, and have this collision course with Georgia. And Georgia feels, again, new offensive coordinator, new quarterback, Brock Bowers out. Who knows the situation there? We thought everything was lining up for Michigan this year, and it has been. If you're talking just on the field, I am very confident that Michigan has the team to win the national championship this year. So if this outside noise can stay outside and they can continue to play the way they are, that that's the expectation. JJ McCarthy is a Heisman front runner in October, right? Like who would have thought we talked about him never being able to get the numbers to do that, right? This, this isn't just us. This is the national media. This is people that knows about football. This is one of the best college football teams we've seen. It's definitely the best team in America. Yeah. I re- wow. I, I, you know, I liked Michigan's chances before the season and now that I've watched them uh, play the season, I even like them more for th- almost all of the reasons that you said. And yeah, McCarthy, like I would have, if you would have told me that, uh, you know, would get to this point of the season and people would want more from the passing game, you know, because Michigan's running it too much. I'd say, you know, I, I see that that's kind of their identity, but it's actually the reverse right now. You know, like the, the passing game is awesome and all through this and people are like, Hey, I'd like a little bit more for the running game. So hey, that's a, a real good problem to have if you're Michigan and, and yeah, McCarthy, you know, the, the B gate, BG game, such an outlier, uh, but, you know, at the time he said it, there was a lot of people that said, hey, maybe this would be a blessing in disguise. I know on Monday when I heard him say, yeah, uh, I was maybe getting a little bit too caught up in, you know, having more, um, you know, uh, TDs than incompletions or something, something crazy like that. And, you know, he just lost it there for a second. But, you know, that was able to, you know, focus him in on the rest of it. But, you know, for as long as I've been watching football, you know, there, there are certain players that, you know, they're they're special and you see it, you know, you're talking about the, the uh, you know, the pass that he had to Loveland. Uh, he had a couple more, the one that, that Morris dropped that he threw in there over the middle. When you saw it from the sideline cam, I was like, wait a second, man, he's just, he's just putting it. Uh, I don't really, there was a couple of the Rutgers game. He threw it in there. He said, Oh, that's the one that the, the scouts are going to go with, you know, against Nebraska. Uh, of course, we all talk about that, that first one that, 
that he threw to Roman Wilson, but it was actually the second one where he was rolling out, throwing behind, and he threw it in on a laser. It's like, you know, these are things, these are wow plays. These are like, this guy is special. And the most special thing about it, you talk about him throwing by ear. If he was just a, a pocket passer that, that had no mobility, you'd say, man, this guy could just really tee it up and just fire it. And yet he is not. He is as mobile as they come. He can throw on the run and also he can take off. And um, who knows what he could run. I know Harbaugh said he'd be close to a 4-4. JJ said he ran a, I don't know, 4-4-7, 4-4-8 the last time he was tied. Yeah. But, you know, he, uh, you know, He's the straw with this thing right now. And, you know, because it's the bye week and this is, the, you know, what people love the scandal. I, do I think it's going to just continue to talk, be talked about? I, I don't know. Like this Michigan, you know, takes Purdue and puts them through the meat grinder. Maybe uh, if Michigan does the same thing to Penn State, it's going to be part of it. If I'm a Michigan fan, I uh, accept that, you know, they have to go through this, but I am also able to cart, uh, uh, put this over in a compartment and, and when I need to, I want to go there and I'll look at it, but the rest of the thing, I, I think you should still be able to enjoy the season and everything that will bring it car car. What am I trying to say? Carpe diem. No, compartmentalize. <laughs> car, mentalize, I'm well, just com gonna, compartmentalize. Compartmentalize. Yeah. <laughs> I just spit that out, but there, there you go. Car. Come compartment, compartmentalize. Compartmentalize. <laughs> yeah. That's what they're trying to do. So uh, yeah. if I can't say it, I'm going to try to do it. Maybe I'm <laughs> do it if I can't say it. So I'll work on that part. Trevor, do you have any final uh, points? I'm going to go right to the end here and see if there's uh, three final ports, uh, points from the people. Yeah, no, that's a good point. What you just said, like, I know it's being made difficult with the stuff that's going on, but yeah, try, try and enjoy it. Right. He's, we back to JJ. He's the best quarterback I've seen at Michigan. Um, I think about some Michigan fans don't like the amount of love I give to CJ Stroud. I think if he would have ran throughout his career, like he did in the Georgia game, I don't know how people would have looked at him because what, that was one of the best games I've ever seen a quarterback play period. And that was always the big knock on him as he didn't run, but he was consistently making those throws. Like I think about every time he ran to the sideline, you just always, perfectly spotted to his receiver on the sideline. And that's what JJ's doing, right? Even these throws that are behind him and you're like, oh, that didn't look good. Then you watch the replay and you realize, oh, a defender's hand was coming up. That was literally the only spot he could put it, right? He's just playing at this other level. The defense is at another level. Um, I was I was 12 years old when 1997 happened. And I that was the first year I really, really got into college football and watched every game. We got Chuck right up there for me. Um, and I had no idea it would be this many years until something similar happened, right? So regardless of this other stuff, you, you don't know how often something like this comes around. So there's only a few games left. Enjoy it, whatever happens. Um, and yeah, you just talking about the players, I think you know you got to feel for them because regardless of what happened in this whole scandal, they didn't know about it, right? They're, they're working hard in the gym every day and they're doing everything to go out there. And you, you just feel bad for anybody that maybe gets tied up in this that had nothing to do with it. Awesome stuff from Trevor McHugh. He mentioned Josh Henschke earlier who, you know, Josh said this is not going to be a daily update update type thing. And yet he has updated it every day. Uh, and I don't know if he can continue to do that, but as long as it's going out, he <laughs> finds uh, some legitimate news. He brings a story out and you can see that on the Maze and Blue Review. Uh, I have noticed a few of you over there. Welcome in. It's fun to be there. Look, uh, usually, you know, I'd say there's, you know, three or four type, you know, topics you can jump in. There's been a half dozen to a dozen of these a day now on, you know, the NCAA in this current situation. So you can just jump in one. You can make your own or, you know, find one to your liking. Just, just ride with it all day or all night. Go to MichiganRivals.com. We'd love to see you over there. I always say, you know, just give us a chance. We think you will uh, like what you see. And as far as me, I'm going to try this again via Vince. I'm going to go out there and compartmentalize, you know, my approach <laughs> to doing this podcast and for Kent and for Trevor saying, go out there and 
carp dm uh i will do that even keep the dm <laughs> as well remember have a great day we look forward to seeing you over on the maze and blue and your next podcast and your next film review which will all be you know taking place soon all right thanks dan it's always good to be with you there he is everybody smash those uh like buttons and we love the